Hello folks, it's Lilia back here and my little feline helper is here as well. So today we're going to talk about something that many exam candidates who I'm having my private classes with ask me all the time. So today we're just going to talk about a part of the exam that bogs so many people's minds because very often some people don't see it as being very objective and other people think it's like totally subjective as you might have guessed by now we're going to talk about use of english and more specifically i'm going to share with you one very powerful technique on how to nail part four of use of english in your cae or cpe language test so the trick of this part is that you need to use between three to eight words to complete a sentence using a keyword which is marked in bold which you can see right under the initial statement so this is something you're required to do it's sometimes tricky because very often if you're giving just a little bit of freedom you may feel as if um, yay so now i can be really creative and in order to be able to test um the candidate's linguistic skill, um, the people who write exams create the exams in a way that, that they are actually checkable so they can just basically track your progress and give you a certain mark. So they have to find this balance between giving you an objective task and giving you a subjective task which is more like productive, something you have to do in your writing and speaking part. We need to keep the right balance between being creative and correct and accurate and free with our language when we do an exam because we need to be aware of the fact that if we choose to do an exam we need to apply um, the rules of the exam so in a certain sense we need to marry our knowledge of the English language and our mastering the English language with the specific format of the exam so having said that I'm just going to share with you one very good technique that might help you master your keyword transformations um, skill um, when it comes to doing this exercise in a way that will help you do it on your own. I should also probably say that this video was inspired by a webinar run by Martin Clark for Oxford University Press that I recently watched. So Martin, if you're watching this video, hello, thank you very much for inspiring me. The webinar was called Researching the Classroom and it was aimed at teachers who are planning to make their classroom experiences more productive and learner oriented. I'm just going to share something very practical with you. So while you're doing your test, it's very important to figure out the area where most of your mistakes lie. There are so many reasons why we make mistakes in this part and very often it depends on the type of thinking that a candidate applies to um, their process of solving a task. If you know specifically which, which um, area your, most of your mistakes lie or are actually in, it gets easier for you to target a specific area instead of just focusing on it all, right? So now this is the moment where we're going narrow, okay? We're going narrow from wide to narrow. This is what we're doing. And here is a lovely analytical task you can do. So what you want to do is you want to do one practice test or two practice tests. So I want you to focus specifically on this keyword transformations task. And what you want to do is you want to create a little table just like this, the one you're going to see on the screen in a moment. So you get the um, number of the test, although that's not the first and foremost thing you need to do. And then you add some criteria according to which or based on which you can judge your own mistakes in a way that turns out productive to you and you know which area you need to focus on. So the criteria might be like this. I didn't know that expression, but now I do, which is very important because when you go to the key section and you check your results, you know which, uh, which expression rather you should have used. And if you didn't know it, isn't it a great time to learn it after all? So I didn't know that expression. So the next criterion is gonna be this. My grammar was wrong. So maybe you used a wrong tense or you didn't use an article and you weren't aware of that. Or maybe you used some instead of any or anything like that. And now it's time to realize that and target that mistake. 
Okay, so sometimes we make format related mistakes. So we run, uh, we, we write nine words instead of eight words. So that's the criterion which you can mark if you did a wrong task. Okay, I did a wrong task. I was too creative is another criterion. So sometimes we try to inject the words that are not even there. Even though the sentence is grammatically fine, sometimes we do need to keep to the criteria of the exam. So sometimes we need to make it checkable for the examiners because we're taking an exam. So now it's time for us to show that our level of English is good, right? So what we want to do is just stick to the rules in a correct manner. So this task is mostly technical. I don't think it's creative. So try to regard it as a technical rather than creative task. So if you're too creative, you might just add quite a lot of sophisticated vocabulary into your sentence, which you're, transfer which you're transforming. And this is not a great idea to do in a technical task like that. I didn't focus enough. That's a criteria which stands for missing an important word. So um, it differs from the um, criteria of I did a wrong task in the sense that this criteria focuses on the language itself and does not have to do with the organisation of the test. So if you don't focus enough, you might have missed an important word such as an article, but you do know that the article should be there. It's just that you didn't really write it into the, um, the paper okay when you're doing it and into the answer sheet so here are some criteria you can add your own ideas because i know it's very difficult if you don't have a private teacher and you're practicing this test on your own it's very important that the approach you take is purely individual so you may learn various tips and techniques from youtube videos like this one but it's very important that you create this personalized approach to your practice so you're very sure in which ta uh, which mistakes you make so then you're very specific on how you can go on and fix those mistakes in your own good time here are some solutions for um basically all of those criteria that we have mentioned above in this video so if you don't know an expression it's very important that you put it into your vocabulary notebook on this channel i've got quite a few videos on how you can learn vocabulary so for productive learning of the vocabulary um, that is relevant to you and your exam purpose you may just check on my recent videos to see what i have to offer to you in terms of tips and techniques of what you can do so just put that expression down you think about it you try to use it always try to own the vocabulary try to use the expression to talk about your own life okay so if your grammar was wrong for some reason you used a wrong tense it's very important to ask yourself why okay so i want you to become a critical thinker okay so when you think about the usage of grammar i want you to ask yourself why the grammar that you had used turned out to be wrong and why the grammar that you have in the key uh, section of your practice test book was right okay so focus on this specifically ask a native speaker friend or ask um a teacher okay or uh, just write me a comment in the comment section down below or write me a message on facebook sometimes i get messages from you guys ask me okay lilia so why why can i say this and why can't i say that and sometimes i do answer those questions if they're really hot burning because i think that sometimes we just don't have we, we don't have the right person to talk to and sometimes we just need a teacher to talk to okay or a knowledgeable person or someone with a knack for grammar okay so some people just know how to use grammar properly so this is one thing you can do okay always try to work out why this grammar is wrong and this grammar is right it's really crucial sometimes your grammar could be equally right okay and this is the case where you may find mistakes in certain course books yes so course books are written by people we all make mistakes so i really want you to apply this critical approach to whatever you choose to do and this is also a point to make about exams as well really now if you spotted that you did a wrong task for a reason and this is a format related mistake okay so see what it concerns so if it has to do with the number of words it's very important that you keep yourself to the word limit but you're given between three and eight words in cpe for example it's very important so keep your eye on that just try focusing a little bit more
If you see that, you might have been too creative, okay? So think about this. In English, we have auxiliary verbs, right? We have a word such as do, does, have, been, being, words that constitute tenses and things like that. And we have, you know, this like more um, personally oriented vocabulary such as sophisticated, um, omnipresence, spirituality. We can see what I mean too, can't you? It's really interesting because in those tasks, right, such as keywords, transformations, remember what I told you before, this is mostly a technical task. And if you have to use a word that has synonyms to it, it's really important that you bear in mind that this word would be actually given to you as a keyword that you have to use, okay? So if you have to use a word such as sophistication, it should be either present in the initial sentence or it should be present as a keyword that you have to actually use while transforming the sentence in any particular way. So you're not very likely to have those highbrow words in your um answer well here unless they're present in the initial sentence so bear that in mind and try to regard this as a technical task rather than a creative task there are parts of the exam where you have this opportunity to shine so no worries you'll have a chance to do that okay so if your problem is that you don't really focus enough so you write something and then you don't check it okay so you write some and you should have written any or anything like that so well here is a good solution go back and check okay just go back and check give yourself a little bit of time to go back and check it's very important that you don't fall into the trap of overanalyzing or overthinking certain sentences because very often your first answer dictated to you by your gut feeling or your instinct will often have to be the right one so it's very important they don't overthink this but also try to make sure that you go back and check the minor things all right because very often these articles they really matter especially if you're a speaker of a language that does not have articles in it so just focus okay as a rule of thumb in general i would suggest working on your general level of english um, it's cool when you know the language and you're confident in your ability to speak it and write in it and then uh, no exam will scare you i would also suggest being honest with yourself as an important rule for doing this task so very often we tend to be a little bit overcritical of ourselves which i would probably say is the better end of the spectrum for this exam than um just um, being a little bit too um, happy with yourself because when we're practicing for an exam we need to make sure that all mistakes are addressed and we present to the exam so to speak the best version of ourselves so it's very important that you're honest with yourself when you're on your own there's no one to conform there's no one to please no one to humor there's just you and the examination paper so it's the right time to be uh, critical of yourself to a healthy degree if you like and just assess yourself using the critical criteria that we've just listed um, on the screen and I really want you to be honest with yourself and tell yourself the truth. It's really important to be positive when you're preparing for an exam though, don't get me wrong, but it's also very important to see where your room, of your room for improvement is, isn't it? So just stick with me and I hope to talk to you again in my forthcoming videos. Please click on the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll talk more about exams and you're also free to leave your questions for my further videos in the comment section down below. I really enjoy reading your comments and I'm always grateful to you if you drop me a message or two on Facebook or anything like that. So thank you very much for your attention guys and I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye!